Good morning. Welcome to our session. Me. I just love that. To, to use this? Okay. Me. Motivate, engage, and empower learners. I have the, uh, my name is Antonia Schleicher, and I just, I had a, an amazing privilege to be the team leader for this program. And uh, I must confess to you that I and my fellow site visitors, we were blown away by the way the instructors of this program took their proposal, transformed it into a model curriculum, and then, most importantly, how they made the curriculum real in the classroom. We witnessed how these young high school kids were motivated engaged and empowered to take ownership of their own learning. It's really amazing to witness. I want you to see quickly what all of us decide visitors wrote about this program. And I want you to, I highlighted the Star Talk principles that were manifested in this program. The schedule, when you look at their schedule, it's a, like a whole day. To look at high schools that were not bored was amazing, from morning till late afternoon. Even the lunch period was part of the program, was used. For the, for, the, for the program. The schedule provides the opportunity for the students to be engaged 100% of the time. There was no boring, a time when you could say these students were bored. The curriculum template and the learning plans for the program are a model. If, I mean, I would encourage all of you to please take a look. At this, at this curriculum template if you're dealing with our student program. The way they differentiated instruction, we talk about <laughs> differentiated instruction. The way they differentiated instruction and also leveraged the, dif the differentiation to bring the students at different levels together to serve as a support for one another. The upper level students serve as mentors and cheerleaders for the lower level students. We saw this in, in action and it was real. The use of various instructional learning episodes to reinforce and achieve the learning targets. That was also manifested. The effective use of target language more than 90% of the time. And the amazing way the instructors make the input comprehensible using different strategies. The learners are highly motivated because of the different strategies that the instructors use for achieving the learning goals. For example, some of the students said, I want the program to be longer. Can you imagine? These are high schoolers. And they were not just saying it. They didn't even say it in front of the instructors. They told us, the site visitors. I want to come back to a level four to be a level four student. And so many comments, there was hardly any negative comment from all the students put together that we got during that visit. Students are always excited to use the money gained from performing well to purchase authentic Chinese materials at the market. They have different programs during the launch. So what you're going to see from my colleagues now will be how did they achieve this? So each of the presenters will be giving you a snippet of each of the programs. And I'm going to hand over to Yafan. Thank you. Sure. Um, thank you very much, Antonia, <laughs> for your nice and encouraging words about our program. 
and it is an honor for us to be here and share what we have done. My name is Yun Fang Zhang. I'm the director of the, Chinese, uh, the Startup Chinese program at Wofford College, and I will talk about how to facilitate the learning process. Every program has its own preparation guidelines. For us, we use several questions. The first question we ask ourselves is, where will our program lead students to? And who should we include? What should we offer? And how should we facilitate their learning? And beyond these question words, we consistently ask ourselves how we can motivate students to learn and stay in the language, how to engage them, and how to empower them to take the ownership of their learning. So now let's look at the language learning process. Here's Krashen's second language learning model. Every startup program emphasizes the output, which aligns with the can-do statement required by startup principles. In our program, beyond the can-do competence, we also hope the students can acquire learning strategies and become lifelong learners. In the other end of the learning process is the comprehensible input. Every program starts with the comprehensible input. So what happens from comprehensible input to the output really determines the success of students' learning. It is wise to analyze the cognitive process and facilitate the process. So here is the flow diagram of Artkinson and Schifrin's Marty Stoll model of memory. According to this model, input is processed to the sensory memory, and then filtered to the short-term memory, and then encoded to long-term memory. When needed, information is retrieved from long-term memory to short-term memory. Rehearsal here helps to encode the information from short-term memory to long-term memory. So let's look at several key elements here. The first element we should look is the sensory memory. Sensory memory is composed of several sensory stores, including touch store, hearing store, and vision store. Strong, intense stimulus can increase the rate of nerve firing. And attention helps process the uh, information from the sensory memory to the short-term memory. Unattended information is lost. Only attended information will be processed to the next step. So it's worth to look at attention. At this level, information is processed at the level of meaning. And there are two popular types of cognitive process, processes of input. One is bottom up, and the other is top down. Bottom up relies on the sensory of the input, while top down relies on the prior knowledge. What we have already known can greatly affect how we perceive the input how easily we recognize them, what meaning we give them, what we learn and remember. So that is why a lot of educators actually say learning start with what learners already know. Now let's look at the shorter memory. People also call it working memory. Badly's uh, revised working memory model mentioned there is a central executive, works with phonological loop, visual spatial sketch pad, and episodic buffer, each of which works with language, semantics, and episodic memory. And for the rehearsal, unrehearsed information is lost. So we have to make sure students learn and rehearse what they learned. So for the rehearsal, there are two popular techniques to make the new information more memorable. One technique is to pair new items to the uh, to something more meaningful. And the other is to pair new information with well-known information. So here is how our program facilitate the learning process. For the input, we provide input that can reinforce learner's sensory and attention. And of course, our input is comprehensible. But beyond comprehensible input, we make our input meaningful interesting and relevant to students' life experiences. And we present the input through stories that students are familiar with in their base culture, and then extend the stories to the popular stories in Chinese culture. The familiarity of stories here can activate students' prior knowledge, can reduce the complexity of to be learned, 
and also can reduce the learner's learning anxiety. And we also present our input through multi-modalities to increase the rate of nerve firing. And for rehearsal, we provide projects and activities that can reinforce rehearsal and encode, encoding. And we provide a repeated yet spiral up activities to help internalize learning and reach automaticity. And uh, we provide more unrehearsed activities than rehearsed activities, since unrehearsed activities actually provide more ownership of learning. For output, we provide opportunities for output that are meaningful, purposeful, and motivational, so students can consolidate what they have learned and discover what they need to learn. And we also provide interesting personalized tasks to motivate and engage learners to be more willing to apply what they learned. And metacognition is the knowledge that students have known about their study processes. We believe that the more students are aware of their cognitive processes and learning strategies, the more willing they will be able to apply what they learn. So in our program, we actually help students to understand the learning process and understand the roles of various activities to reinforce the learning processes. So in our program, we include discussion on metacognition in our morning assembly, afternoon exit, during our project time, and also during activity transitions. So now uh, I will turn the time to you, and uh, on the handout, the activity handout, you will have three minutes to go over the first, the first activity and you can reflect on what you have heard and then think what you can apply in your program. And then when three minutes is up, you will discuss one point from your note to the person sitting next to you. Thank you. All right, so here's the fun part where we call on people. <laughs> All right, so I think we've been doing pretty much individual work so far, right? So we'll ask for individual contributions. Hello. <laughs> so what sorts of inputs, what sort of activities do you do to input, to get inputs in your program? So was that a specific activity or was it overall? Either one. OK. I just wrote, uh, we had a brown bear activity where we were, where we wanted to teach the students about different animals and colors. Mm -hmm. um, so we told them the story with pictures, uh, with actions. Uh, and by the end of the activity, they were able to recognize all the animals in the native language mm -hmm. with the color. So we taught two concepts in the same activity. Great. And you use a story to do that, we right? We did the story. Yeah. Great. Because that's a story that know, they know, uh, and they could relate to the story, uh, because that's in the language, in English language, so uh -huh. it becomes easy for them to understand right. in the native language that we were, I mean, we were doing Hindi. OK, so, super. Yeah. Great. Right, so she said they use the story that the students are already familiar with to do input of the new animals and colors. So fantastic, that ties right in with what Professor John was saying. All right. All right, super. Um, uh, in our camp, we did the little Red Riding Hood, but we did it in a Hindi version because our camp was for Hindi. So it was Nani Lal Chunni. So we also showed the, po we had the poster in the room, and we also told the story most of them, they knew the little riding hood, and we also had like something to dress up like that with the red chunni and everything. So they were very excited. They started dressing up like that and ask, started asking questions. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks. And with the uh, dressing up like Red Riding Hood, they have that excitement. Yeah. Right. They had like a red chunni. Yep, and it's more memorable too when they're excited. Exactly. Yeah, they want to do that every day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Somebody at this table? Volunteer? All right, super. We had Chinese programs, so uh, we did, and we had, we're separated by regions. In one region, uh, we did Monkey King, so we did story as well. Um, we, so, vocabulary input was, or input in general was through. Uh, through Monkey King. We also used the walls 
to talk. We used QR codes, and that was another way for input, so that wow. the kids were able to drive their own acquisition, drive their own input modes. You know, right. right. Thank you very much. All right. Are you, are you we're we're a little. Okay, yep. Really thanks. So. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate it. We're gonna try and keep on track time wise, but yeah. If we can hold it till the end, okay. that way we can make sure we can get through all the activities. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. You can write it down yeah. so that you don't forget. Yeah, write it down so you don't forget <laughs> if you have a question. Thank you. And now it's my huh? time? Yep. Okay. Hi, uh, everyone. My name is Nali, and I'm going to share how our program helps students uh, stay in the target language in our classroom. And on the first day, we start, uh, starting from the first day in our camp, we introduced and demoed classroom expressions in uh, Chinese to help students understand what teachers ask them to do. Uh, for example, mm, conversation practice, um, oral presentation, to look, to listen, to speak, and to write. And we also uh, require students to speak in Chinese. So that's why we have the classroom expression, uh, expression to remind them to speak in Chinese. And we also want students to learn how to express them, uh, to express their needs in Chinese. So they can, uh, if they have questions, they can say, uh, raise hand and say, I have questions in Chinese. Or ask the teachers to, please say it again. Or how to say in Chinese or in English when they need to go for fountain or use restroom. So all of these uh, uh, useful e uh, classroom expressions we will introduce and demo in the first day. Uh, in addition, we give students a digital story based a comprehensive, uh, comprehensible input. Um, this is very interesting because uh, our keynote speaker just talked about Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg this early morning. And uh, uh, this year, our program, uh, we have two themes. One, uh, one theme is about my hero, my community. So we chose Mark Zuckerberg as the main character in our stories. Because firstly, Mark Zuckerberg can speak Chinese very well. So <laughs> he is the good role model for our program students to motivate them to learn Chinese very well. Now Chinese people speak Chinese very well, but American people speak Chinese very well, like <laughs> our pet. <laughs> really a great model in our program. And uh, secondly, uh, Zuckerberg and his wife contributes a lot to uh, the charity, and they are hero to community. So that's why Zuckerberg can be the best candidate in our stories. And uh, why do we adopt digital stories in our curriculum? Because firstly, uh, stories can always make language learning meaningful. And our learners, they don't learn grammar and vocabulary alone. They learn grammar and vocabulary through contextualized uh, input and setting. And uh, we created the story uh, this one, we created the story with Zuckerberger's high school life, and, um, um, and our students really enjoy the story, and they are curious how uh, Zuckerberg, uh, what kind of classes Zuckerberg take, they take in his high school, and they want to compare their classes with Zuckerberger's classes, and they want to share what uh, their favorite classes, uh, why they like and why they don't like. And secondly, when we create stories, we can always recycle previous knowledge, previous materials into our new stories. Uh, for example, you can uh, use old grammar with new vocabulary, or uh, old vocabulary with new uh, grammar, or even the old uh, previous stories connecting to new stories. Um, when we introduce the, uh, when we during the storytelling, so lots of pictures, movie, uh, video clips can give movie talks. Um, 
these pictures really give students uh, lots of um, visual aids and make the language, uh, language input more comprehensible and help students under the target language easily. So this slide is talking about uh, Mark Zuckerberg was born in New York and uh, raised up in New York. So we, the, the picture you are looking at now is uh, just a screenshot, but when we tell the story, we have the animation function. Hmm. And uh, when we tell the story, we, uh, when we, uh, during the storytelling, we don't just tell the story to students. Uh, however, we have lots of repetition through different questions. For example, uh, what sports does he like? And uh, uh, which year did he run in Beijing? Where did he run? And whom does he run with together? So through uh, such kind of different questions, students can practice a lot through uh, lots of repetition. And as teachers, we can also assess their understanding, whether they understand the story very well through questions and answers, interaction. In addition, we have the uh, personalized uh, questions to different students and about what, like, uh, what sports do you like? Do you, like, do you also like uh, running, like uh, uh, as Zuckerberg does? So in this way, students, they can apply the target language in the real life setting. And besides uh, storytelling and classroom uh, expressions, we also uh, have um, total participating class games and activities. We focus on students participate the activity at the same time. And students' favorite games are Jeopardy, me too, and the board games. So when you use Jeopardy, you can have uh, all kinds of, uh, all times uh, uh, questions like a watching movie to answer questions, a uh, listen or audio to answer questions, or you can give a role play settings to have them make conversation or oral presentation and reading, small reading comprehensions to help them stay in the target language. So, these are uh, how we help students stay in the target language in our classroom. And now it's our second activity time. And could you please work with your same target language partner and talk about what's the same of your program and how, uh, is there any story you can use in your program according to your language and, and culture? How many minutes we have? Uh, we have, three. yeah, three minutes will do Three it. minutes, okay, yeah. please. Last time I didn't get a chance to hear from this table, so who would like to talk for you guys here? Any brave volunteers? All right, sir. Um, thank you. Actually, in our program, we have the Silk Road, and we have travelers and traveling along the Silk Road. And we teach the students the story of the famous Arab traveler, Ibn Battuta. And the students have to read about Ibn Battuta first, and then they watch the cartoon about Ibn Battuta before coming to class, and they come to class for um, for learning and validation. That is basically what we do in, in the program. Fantastic. Great. <laughs> Thanks. Super. So using the story of somebody that would be familiar to native speakers of the target language so that when the students are done with the Star Talk, they can talk about this person with native speakers, and it will be meaningful to those native speakers. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. So I teach Persian at Stony Brook University in Long Island. And the theme of our program is uh, traveling to Iran. Mm -hmm. And one part of that we have is about culture celebrating New Year. And we connect it to Christmas celebration here and a celebration of New Year, which is about getting together with family, food, and shopping, all these things. So Persian New Year, which is in March, is a big holiday celebration in Iran and culture, so we have a lot of emphasis on it. And through this, talking about Persian New Year, we uh, incorporate a lot of activities for food, teaching what kind of food people eat, traditional food, about um, different ethics for greeting, how to greet older people, younger people, mm -hmm. and different seniority, age, and all these things, and about shopping, shopping for new clothes, new food items, and we have a table setting for New Year that we have in the house for about 12 days, 13 days, and we just talk about significance of this table, which goes back 3,500 years ago, 
and so they learn a lot through this story of New Year. Great, thank you. No rules, right? No rules, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Uh, name of this holiday is No Rules. Ah. <laughs> yes, No Rules. Great, thanks. So we had a literal story and also a figurative story, but as long as it's tying things together, the students will be more likely to remember what they're learning. How many of you have ever been on an airplane flight in the U.S., opened up your in-flight magazine and seen an ad where it just says, it's just lunch on it? Just curious. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm talking about what we did during lunchtime in our Star Talk, but this popped into my head. So it's an executive dating service. Um, but that's not what we did in our Star Talk. But, uh, <laughs> this is how we, what we do during lunch that keeps them in the target language and doing meaningful things. So what we did was at lunchtime, the students would get their lunches from the cafeteria and then go downstairs into the, uh, the eating area and split into two groups of about 25 students each. Uh, and there were teachers in both rooms along with them. And once most of the students were in the room, we would start going around the room and the students would do self-introductions. So their self-introductions would grow over time uh, to include the material that they learned in the morning classes, uh, as well as loop back and reuse material that they learned in previous days' morning classes. After each student would complete his or her self-introduction, then the teachers would ask comprehension questions of the other students in the room. Uh, so this way, as you've done in your own classes thousands of times, we made sure that the other students were paying attention. <laughs> so um, this is also beneficial because when the students hear their classmates answering questions about their own biographical information, it makes them feel pretty good. After all the students have finished their self-introductions, the uh, teachers do a little huddle and then uh, pick students for first, second, third place for the day, and also a most improved. We wanted to make sure that students who maybe they never get to that first, second, or third place during the two weeks, that there's still room for them to get an award. And so these students are rewarded with imitation Chinese currency that my colleague Yu Chao will show in a few minutes. Um, but we have, counterfeit's not the word, but <laughs> play money, play Chinese money uh, that we award to the students for use later. We'll describe how we use them later. So I'll show you an example. This is the same student at the beginning of the program and then near the end of the program. Hope this works. One of the things I like about this sample is that language learning is real life, right? So if I showed this video and he banged it out and it was like a native speaker, you would say, that's not realistic. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what real life language learning is like, right? So he's introducing his family, he stands there and thinks for a while, and then he keeps going. <coughs> My mom's a doctor. My dad is, I was talking over that. And their classmates, you can see, they're, they're pretty good about listening. And then they clap afterwards, right? Um, and so <laughs> who doesn't like to be clapped for? So every day, no matter how your self-introduction went, everybody's going to clap after you're done. It's just polite. All right, so here he is about a week and a half later. So now he's introducing his school. So he has introduced his family over and over and over, and he has that down pat. And so now he's challenging himself by taking the material that he learned in class in the morning and introducing his school as well. <laughs> and it's a lot smoother than the first one, too. Uh, and we've also taught the students when you're doing self-introductions to say thank you, everybody, when they're done, then sit down and clapping. So this is going to happen over and over and over for the rest of their Chinese-speaking lives. <laughs> <laughs> so why do we do it this way? First of all, it's a presentational mode uh, self-introduction. Great practice. Uh, interpretive response to biographical information. So the teachers are asking comprehension questions. The students are responding based on what they heard. They don't always get it right, but oftentimes they do. Uh, and they're getting rewarded for those correct answers with the imitation Chinese money. Uh, it's a platform for applying the new material and recycling the old material. Uh, also, performing for larger audiences gradually reduces performance anxiety. Now, all of us have students who are afraid of talking in the target language, and sometimes in English, uh, to other people. And by everybody having to take a turn doing a self-introduction, 
Everybody knows it's going to come to me eventually. I'm just going to have to suck it up and do it. By the end of the two weeks, almost every single student is totally fine with it. I'm not going to lie to you and say all of them are fine with it, but almost every single student just gets up there, bangs it out, and then hopes they're going to get their imitation Chinese money when they're done with it. Uh, also in Ludu 1996, said that adrenaline helps us remember things. Mm -hmm. So you'll remember a roller coaster ride more than a walk in a park with just trees and grass, right? So when you stand up in front of an audience and give a self-introduction, you're going to be rem remembering your self-introduction better than if you were just sitting down and saying it to see people at your table. And here are a couple of theoretical frameworks that you know, Professor Zhang already introduced, the modal model, came out in 1968. Uh, so input, we're all doing input all the time in our programs, of course. We have the classroom activities in the morning. Uh, rehearsal, you see, these kids are rehearsing their self-introductions all the time because every single one of them knows they're going to be on the spot at lunchtime. So when they have free time, you can see them mumbling their self-introductions to themselves. <laughs> Even as they're getting their food at their tray, they're saying their self-introduction to themselves because they're about to go on stage. So the output, of course, is the self-introduction. All right. Also, in terms of motivational teaching practice, um, we want to make sure that we're tapping into the things that make the students want to do what we want them to do. Uh, so in creating a basic motivational condition in the classroom, it's a nurturing atmosphere where we're inputting the material that they're going to be expected to output at lunchtime. So we're not asking them at lunch to do anything that they don't have the tools to do. That would be frightening. <laughs> so we've given them the tools they need. Uh, generating initial motivation. Uh, so um, they know they're going to be getting imitation money. Uh, a lot of the students like to share things about themselves with their classmates. Because for many of them, they're strangers to one another. And so this is an opportunity right from the first day of lunch to start sharing biographical information about themselves with each other and to find points of commonality. You're from Greenville, South Carolina? Oh, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina. And they can make friends. Uh, maintaining and protecting motivation. Again, this imitation Chinese money goes a long way. <laughs> so if they know they have this opportunity to get the imitation Chinese money that they're going to be spending at the end of the day, again, we'll introduce that in a, in a couple of minutes, um, then they're really excited about doing a good job in their self-introduction and answering the questions. Uh, those students who know that their listening is better than their presentational ability, then they can listen hard to their classmates and then answer these comprehension questions and still have an opportunity to make the imitation money. And encouraging positive retrospective self-evaluation. So they get the applause for them. They get classmates answering questions about their own information. Uh, and they get the imitation Chinese money, where they can actually count how well they're doing. <laughs> oh, I had a 10 RMB day. That was a good day. So how can we be using lunchtime at your Star Talk? And let's keep in mind the quote, remembering the future, which is uh, Professor Galal Walker and Mari Note at The Ohio State University. Uh, this phrase means, are our students doing things in our classes and in our activities that they will be expected to do in the target culture in the future? So doing a self-introduction is something that we all have to do over and over and over and over. So we're using this lunchtime to give them practice for something that they will have to do in the future. And are they getting tangible and intangible rewards for good performances? So our tangible rewards would be the imitation Chinese money. Intangible would be applause, finding friends, getting confirmation from the classmates that they know about my biographical information. So let's take a look at your handout. This is activity four. Start from the output. What kind of culturally appropriate output are you doing or could you do in your Star Talk at lunchtime? to make full use of your lunch time. And then you can work backwards on how do you get there? What inputs are you doing or could you be doing to reach that output at lunch time? And are there any other rehearsal activities or rehearsal times uh, outside of the classroom activities that they could be using? So let's take two minutes to, do on, to work on that. All righty. Brave volunteers will be chosen. <laughs> All right. He hasn't Great. talked. Peter? You should tell yeah. them. Please, share with us. <laughs> about the uh, output, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think what we did in my program, uh, 
she visited me the, at the beginning of the second week. And then we did a lot of adjustments uh, following the conversation that we had. So we started recycling materials from week one, mm -hmm. and we actually started video recording. So uh, in, in week one, we had covered uh, certain topics as you were coming a visitor to your place, because it's not just mm -hmm. knocking. You have to shout, may I come in? in ah. So each, each student would step outside the room, and then we would have a table. And then as the instructor, so then I would be the parent. Mm. Uh, I'll invite my assistant to be another parent. And then the other students would be, the, you know, our kids. Uh -huh. <laughs> so at their age mates. Uh -huh. And then once uh, they ask, may I come in? And then maybe we are watching our movie. We will pretend. And then they would keep on shouting, may I come in? May I come in? <laughs> and then they come with us here. And then they uh -huh. rush to open the door for them. Uh -huh. Once they come, they have to greet us appropriately. Uh -huh. I'm a parent. So they cannot just say hello to me. The age appropriate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And then we would engage them in a conversation. Uh, have them have a seat, and then it's a tradition. Once you visit an East African family, you have to drink tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so for the time of the day, uh -huh. and then you have them have tea, and then lunch, and then we have all this conversation going on up until the time for leaving. Ah, yeah. great. Yeah. Thanks. And I love hearing the variety of things that come out, you know, a room full of people, right? So many good ideas here. Things that, so that's something they have to learn to do over and over and that's over. Right. I that's love right. it. I love it. That's right. All right. Let's get one more contribution. All right. Great. Yeah, and the more they do it, the more they feel comfortable. So one of the activities that we did during lunch was uh, before, uh, before lunch, we had talked about likes and dislikes. Mm -hmm. And um, at, and we demonstrated that you are going to make a sandwich for your uh, partner. And we had set up of a lot of different different things like tomatoes and all the condiments, cheese, buns, burgers. And then you ask your uh, partner uh, who, uh, in, in the target language, what do you want on your sandwich? Mm -hmm. And the, your partner will make a sandwich for uh, yourself and vice versa. Ah. So whatever they learned in class, it was reinforcing that they were able to, you know, as an output. Yep. I think that went well too. Fantastic. Thanks. I love it. So they're, they're using the things in class in an outside of the classroom environment. It just makes it real, right? Fantastic. Thank you. I know there are a lot of other good ideas in here, but we need to keep going to you, Lash. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Professor Pat, my colleague. And then my part, and um, first of all, my name is uh, Yu Chao, and my part is introduct, uh, introduce you some of the motivation he um, to catch up of his um, uh, points. So first of all, I have three questions for you. If you agree, please raise up your hands. Not, no, okay? First of all, first question, do you agree? Do you want to be motivated? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Okay. Or still two person don't raise our hand. <laughs> Maybe they don't, okay? Second question. Do you want to be motivated by rewarding? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. Two hands, right? Okay. <laughs> right. So good. And third thing, uh, third question. Uh, do you agree? Learning must be rewarding or satisfying by some points. Do you agree mm. or not? Agree. Definitely, right? I agree. So with this keep in mind, and uh, that's why we created this called Chinese market. Uh, Chinese market, That's We use this market uh, using our imaginary imitation money, okay, and uh, ask our students to purchase their favorites. So during, after the lunch time, based on the students' interests, uh, we divided the four groups, and we gave them four, uh, four options to choose the activity, cultural activities. We have calligraphy, and we have a handcraft, also we have dancing, and singing class, and then uh, drama class. So uh, we teach uh, at uh, each group, uh, two groups at the same time, the rest of the groups, they have the options to purchase their stuff. And then also the rest of students can make their own project. So why a market? First of all, you may be interested. Oh, what the market is selling about? So the market is uh, provide students with a well, variety of Chinese, traditional Chinese items. For instance, you may see this, Chinese fans. 
or the Chinese knot, or the traditional Chinese shuttle, uh, shuttlecocks we call jianzi, or one of their favorite thing is panda, mm -hmm. chopsticks and fork sets, or some cute pocket. Well, the students, they, you know, during even the lunchtime or in the morning, they can earn all of this uh, imitation money. And then during the longer classes, during the lunchtime or during the project time, if they make the best of it, we give them $10, like 10 yuan, <laughs> or five. Or if they're okay, we give them one to rewarding <laughs> them. So uh, why we do this? Uh, I'm going to explain it. Uh, first of all, motivate students by rewarding them with these market items. Or secondly, it is an authentic context where students can learn use the target language. And thirdly, to integrate uh, cultural authentic, um, authentic materials. As we know, why do motivation matters? As we know, because uh, we need to decide whether this motivation is intrinsic or extrinsic. As we say, interested motivation is a desire to do achieve something because truly wants or take pleasures to see the values in doing so. However, the ecstasy motivation is a desire to achieve something not for enjoyment for the things itself, but, uh, but because of doing leads to certain results. So obviously, we want to the students to be motivated by, uh, by intricacies. So that's why. We did, uh, based on the theory, uh, we know that in 1987, the uh, scholar John Kelly designed its ARCS multi, uh, model motivational design. First of all, he popped up that in order to grab a student's attention, you have to design something, you know, for like a role plays, games, or like um, activities like our Chinese market, you know, to gain their attention. And then whenever you get their attention, you need to use your concrete languages you know, to use them. I'm going to explain the concrete languages we use at the following slide. And third thing, whenever you use these languages and you want to make them build up their confidence, you know, once you build up the confidence, they can be uh, very confident to use these languages. And thirdly, once they use it, they feel, they feel very confident and then they were, this is so beneficial for them to use it. So, the target languages we use. During this market time, we push our students to use Chinese only, you know, to, for instance, how much is the pencil, how much is the uh, an eraser. So this is the point we push them to use the new vocabulary, which they don't use in the language class. And uh, also they want to say, oh, I want to buy this one, or I want to buy two pencils. pencils. That's, a, that's the time we want to learn to the numerals. And third thing, they can say, oh, this is too expensive. Can I get a cheaper one? And we say, no, OK, you should earn more money. <laughs> so that's the time they, they will uh, use the comparative structures. You know. And the third thing, they said, OK, I want that red instead of the pink. So this, time to, the, this, this is the time for them to use the colors. They may not know what our purpose are. But we want to you know, give them more opportunities to use it, practice it you know, in the future life. The lastly, integrate culture authentic materials to display the Chinese art and the craft. You may see after our a, uh, activity class, the students may have the chance to play the jianzi. They really, really <laughs> interested in it. All the motivations to earn the money speak well in the presentation time and to buy this because we sell it as very expensive. <laughs> okay. And then the Chinese fan, so they are doing the dancing class in the Chinese fan classes, and then they can purchase their fine. So when they go back home and their parents say, wow, what is this? They say, mom, you know, I use my money because I do really outstanding performance, and then I purchase a fine. So I would say in their lifelong time, uh, as Professor Pat mentioned about uh, remembering the future, so this is the point. Maybe when you get when move to you know the age of sixties, you still remember that fan, <laughs> or you still remember this jianzi <laughs> that when you were twelve years old in Star Talk Warfold, you learned it or you earned it. So that's why we need, indeedly need, motivate to be motivated. Okay. Thank you very much, and I may give you.
three minutes. And to do the activities, please walk in pairs and with your desk mate. First of all, how to, how to design your own activities in your own program. Uh, think about the goals. What do you want to push them? What target languages you want them, your students to learn? And what kind of props you're going to use? For instance, our prop is all traditional, authentic Chinese materials, right? So what props are you going to bring up? And thirdly, how are you going to assess it? OK, so and the most important, what's the feedback you're going to gain from your students? OK, three minutes, please. All right, so we're going to call on two people to share what they've been thinking about. Um, and yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we talked a little bit about the difference between intrinsic and extrinsic motivation uh, and how extrinsic motivation is incredibly powerful within the classroom, um, but it might not transfer as well to outside of the classroom once the motivating factors are not there. So the, the challenge of doing actual intrinsic motivation um, is huge, and the potential later side effects are also interesting if you do sort of extrinsic motivation focused exercises, um, you're also sort of uh, instilling uh, performance mindset and fixed intelligence beliefs, and we had mentioned metacognition a little bit. So I think these things are all pretty related, and sometimes the clearest, clearest motivating force in the present moment can actually have these downstream consequences. So thank you for that food for thought. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I promised we'd hear about Raffle tickets in the Portuguese program. <laughs> <laughs> we have a Portuguese uh, program, and um, a lot of heritage learners, uh, second, third generation, and uh, have in the area of many cultural celebrations, uh, students attend uh, because we have second through 11th grade, majority of the students second to, through sixth grade, and they attend but don't participate as much. So, one of the things that we do, we do a lot of traditional things and cultural things, and, and we, in order to not force the students, but to motivate the students to learn, we have the, the raffle tickets. And those raffle tickets can be used to purchase some things created by the students and also purchase as well. For example, some cultural drinks that they only see at these celebrations, they're able to purchase that and, and, and have it in, in the school and, and uh, more accessible than the purchase stuff at the, at the celebrations. But the little, little bracelets, little flags they put together. Uh, also, we have some little sweet bread that's very typical of Azores and Portugal where kids eat that. But instead of just eating those at the celebrations once twice a year, once or twice a year, they have it and the thing of that lunchtime uh, as we do that. So, uh, but the important thing is to to live the experience, you know, through participating and participation. And once they live an experience, they handle it. They, they're able to purchase themselves instead of the parents purchasing for them. It makes, it makes it more meaningful to them. And therefore, they're, they're able to live that, to experience that. And they retain the information better by the hands-on, by living that as well. So those tickets, uh, they, 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 they try real hard to practice target language so they can earn the, you know, those tickets, so they can purchase that and hold in their hands and be there so they purchase their own money. So mm -hmm. it's been very successful for us. Wow. Great. That's great. Thank you very much. All right, Professor John? Yeah, uh, thank you very much for your feedback uh, and sharing your activities. Actually, we fully agree with you, like how to motivate students to extend their learning from the classroom to outside of the classroom. So in addition to the market, we also include a final showcase where the students, they actually perform in our main auditorium and to their parents and to their friends and to their teachers. Uh, and also the students, we invited them every day. We encourage them to say, okay, Today you learn these things. Maybe you can do some projects to create your own storybook. And then in the morning assembly, you will bring it back to us, and then you will present. And then we will buy it from you, use our camp money. So we see this is the money, not the real RMB, but we also print our, our uh, mark there. It's a Star Talk at Walford program. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, it's amazing. I'm going to show you a video. So it's really amazing to see, like, some students, they don't have opportunities to learn Chinese at their regular school. They only learn Chinese two weeks with us. And then the next year, without any learning in school, they come back and they still have a big memory of what they learned from the first year. So normally it happens 
to be like the only after one or two days review, and they can jump to our next level. So that's amazing. That's how important it is to help students to learn and internalize their learning, mm -hmm. to have a long memory of what they learned. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to show the video of a student during uh, the presentation during the final showcase. during the final showcase. I didn't interrupt and translate what she said. Basically, it's from her own biographic information, her family and her hobbies, and then to schools, and finally to the community and hero. And also, she kind of have a big uh, dream to be a hero in the future. Oh. Okay, so um, uh, before we move on to the questions, I also want to share like this afternoon, we will have an exhibition um, and where we will share our resources. And we also designed, actually, two years ago, an app for students to learn how to write characters. Because we feel like writing characters really make Chinese more challenging than a lot of languages. So how we can help them facilitate their learning process and also give students tours outside of the classroom. Like we only have two weeks, we cannot include a lot of reading and writing. But they have a tour, so if their level is good enough, they want to include the reading and writing, and we have the tour here to help them. So you're welcome to stop by. And um, we can take one question, and also we have a feedback form on your table, which is printed on the colored paper. So if you would like to uh, share your feedback to us, and uh, like just my colleague, each child ask, and everybody raise your hand, you want to get motivated you and rewarded. So we have a reward for you if you give us your feedback. <laughs> that is a panda pencil. Authentic Chinese pencil. Everybody loves pandas. Thanks. All right, we've gone a little over, so I apologize. Um, but if you want to stick around and, and talk individually, that would be fantastic. Um, so if you're done with your feedback form, uh, bring it up to uh, one of our uh, teachers. And if you completely run on intrinsic motivation, you can just hand it in and, and leave without the pencil. But if you want a pencil, it's yours. <laughs> 